In this lesson, I am going to discuss solving quadratic equations by factoring. Let us recall the zero product property. The zero product property is saying that if the product of two numbers is equal to zero, then that means that at least one of them should be equal to zero. Hence, if you have a product of two numbers which is equal to zero, then you can equate the factors to zero. However, you cannot do that if the number on the right hand side is not equal to zero. For example, I have AB is equal to 1. You cannot say that A is equal to 1 or B is equal to 1 because you can have 3 halves and 2 thirds. The product is equal to 1, but these two numbers here are not equal to 1. So remember that constant has to be zero always. Here are the steps in solving quadratic equation using factoring. The first step is to set one side equal to zero so that we can make use of the zero product property. The second step is to factor the non-zero side. And once you have factored the non-zero side, you can now set each of the factors to zero and solve for the variable. For example, we have x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals zero. Our first step, one side must be equal to zero. That's done. Second step, factor the other side. What is the factorization of x squared plus 2x minus 15? Since you have a coefficient of 1 here for x squared, how do you factor this kind of quadratic trinomial? We are thinking of the factors of negative 15 such that when you add them up, you get positive 2. What are those two? Those are 5 and negative 3. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. And 5 plus negative 3 is equal to 2. So therefore, the factorization here is x plus 5 and x minus 3 is equal to 0. So step 3, equate each of the factors to... 0 or x minus 3 is equal to 0. And now solve for x. x is equal to negative 5 or x is equal to 3. We're done. For our next example, we have negative x squared plus 8x is equal to 12. Remember that the first step is to always set one side equal to 0. I will put the x squared on this side over here because I do not want a negative coefficient for x. I will just put it here on this side. x squared minus 8x plus 12 is equal to 0. Next step, we want to factor x squared minus 8x plus 12. What is the factorization of that? What are the factors of 12 whose sum is negative 8? Those are negative 6 and negative 2. Correct? This is going to be equal to 0. And last step, you now equate each of the factors to 0. So we get that x is equal to 2 or x is equal to 6. For our next example, we have 3x plus 1 times x minus 2 equals negative 4. This is already in factored form. Can we do this? Can I set each of the factors to negative 4? No, we cannot do that because this side over here is not equal to 0. Remember our zero product property? The product should be equal to 0 for you to be able to equate each of the factors to 0. And how do we proceed? Let me first multiply 3x plus 1 and x minus 2. I have 3x squared minus 6x plus x minus 2 equals negative 4. This is 3x squared negative 6x plus x is minus 5x and then minus 2. Remember that we have to set one side equal to 0. So when I transpose this, it will now become plus 2. 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. 
take note that the coefficient of x squared is no longer equal to 1. So how do you factor that? First, we put the factors of 3x squared here. What are those? We have 3x and x. And then, we put the factors of the constant here. These are factors of the first term, whereas these two are the factors of your last term. What are the factors of 2? Since I have a minus sign here, you will see later, I will use minus 2 and minus 1. We are not yet done. We still have to check our outer and inner. If this is the case, I have negative x and then this is minus 6x. When we add it up, that's negative 7x. But I want it to be negative 5x, your middle term. Let me now put my 2 here and my minus 1 here. This is negative 2x. Outer terms would be negative 3x. And that sum is negative 5x, which is exactly what we want. So correct, this is the required factorization. I will set it to 0. Now we can set each of the factors to 0 because this side over here is already 0. We have 3x minus 2 is equal to 0 or x minus 1 is equal to 0. These are just linear equations. So therefore, we can now solve for that. 3x is equal to 2. Divide both sides by 3. Get that x is equal to 2 thirds. Whereas here, we get that x is equal to 1. These two are your solutions. For our last example, we have 2x squared minus 19x minus 33 equals 0. One side is already equal to 0, so therefore we proceed by factoring. I will put 2x and x here. Those are the factors of 2x squared. And then here, I will put the factors of negative 33. What are the factors of negative 33? I will try 11 and minus 3 here. Do not forget to check your outer and inner terms. I have positive 22x, so therefore the sum is 19x. Alright, not quite. This is minus 19x, so all I have to do is to just tweak the signs. I will make this positive 3x so that this will be 3x, and I will turn this to minus so that this is going to be negative 22, hence the sum is negative 19x. This is equal to 0, and therefore we can now set each of the factors to 0. We have 2x is equal to negative 3. Divide both sides by 2, we get that x is negative 3 halves, or for this one, we have x is equal to 11. These two are your solutions for this given equation.